Hi, this is Michael Buffer, and let's get ready for EJ Boxing Live. To this day. Day, day, day. Yo, what's going on, people, man? It's EJ Boxing Live, and we're back here, boy. Um, hope you guys are enjoying the Christmas. Um, it's not been easy, but you know, end of the day, you know, we're trying to do the best we can in, in, in these circumstances. So, unsung boxing heroes, I'm gonna do a series of this. My first one is uh, Stevie Little But Bad Johnson. Johnson, and um, I must admit, yeah, this man is is definitely an unsung boxing hero, in my opinion. Um, the man went to Japan, no, the man went to France to win his first world title. Defended it in Japan. Then he came back to America. And uh, even though he lost the title, he won it back. And arguably, in his amateur career, had some of the greatest fights against Shane Mosley, Vernon Forrest. And um, to me, in my opinion, uh, when Shane Mosley, who they regarded was the best late, white, uh, lightweight at the time, never fought him, um, he, did, he would have got that fight, the, the Castillo fight. Uh, he lost the fight in... Um, in California and lost the fight in California. Had the rematch in Denver, Colorado against Finger, got a draw. And it's a shame if he didn't get that. Mameva was moving up, then it could have been the Southpaw, Parnell Whitaker, Slick, uh, Stevie Little But Bad Johnson versus Floyd Mayweather. So uh, he didn't get that fight, which would have put him in in the rear air as one of the greatest, uh, the greatest there. But uh, it was never to happen. But what he did do, is fight the best lightweights uh, at the time, in my opinion, is regardless as the one of the best lightweights of, of uh, would long best lightweights of the last like 30, 40 years. Um, better than Shane Mosley's resume by far, by far. I mean, you could just look at the resume he fought, who he fought lightweight, and um, you can clearly see that this this guy is good. So you're going to hear in his own words about his thing, and what I'm going to show and show footage of him. Uh, during his amateur career, we'll go over here, my man. Yeah, yeah, I'm good, man. How you doing, bro? Yeah, I hope, hope you enjoy this. Yeah, so I'm gonna show uh, footage of his amateur career of him doing his thing. So, uh, so hope you guys enjoy. And I'm, you know, Stevie Little but Bad John Johnston. If you don't know, now you know. Unsung boxing heroes, uh, saga one. So let's get into it. Twenty-three all the way down to nine. Wow, wow, that's a, that's a big family. Yeah, well, that's, that's a lot to handle to take care of, feed them, yeah, huh? Yes, yes, yes. Wow, I'm excited. Yes. Uh, okay, so with that being said, um, and and how long have you been here? Born and raised. We want to get a little into some background about you. So, where are you from originally? Um, and and how long have you been here? Born and raised Denver, Colorado, all my life. Born and raised in Denver, Colorado. Yes, sir. All your life. Yes. Uh, okay, so with that being said, are you married? No. You're not married? No. Do you have any children? Yes. You have, how many children do you have? I got six. Six children? Yes. Wow. I mean, so what's that makeup like? How many boys and how many girls? I got uh, two boys and four girls. Two boys and four girls? Yeah. And what's that age range? Uh, 23 all the way down to nine. Wow. Wow. That's a, that's a big family. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a lot to handle to take care of feed them, huh? Yes, yes, it is. I hear that. I hear that. So, okay, let's get into your boxing career now. So, um, who or what inspired you to uh, start boxing? Well, everybody in my family was fighters. Now from my grandfather to my dad to my uncles, then me. Wow, wow. At what age did you start? I was seven years old when I stepped in the ring. And how did boxing change your life? It changed it. Like, oh, everything in the boxing. Do? Yes. Okay, okay. And how long have you been boxing? Well, I was boxing so it was, since I was seven years old, and I retired when I was 35. Oh, okay, so, okay. So let's a little. Uh, oh yeah? yeah, long time, man. Uh, let's find out about your first training. Um, when you first started training, how was that? Well, for me, my dad was a fighter. And my grandfather, and my uncles. It was it was more or less in the home, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where I really started learning how to fight in mm -hmm. the home. And then uh, my grandma used to watch when I was a little kid, mm -hmm. and I was getting too bad for her to watch. She was like, you know, y'all need to take him to the gym with you guys. Mm -hmm. and from then on. So that's how that spark in you? Yeah. Oh, okay, I mean. okay. Have, was there ever a time where you thought, like, you didn't want to box? 
Yeah, because uh, I used to play football too. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I didn't grow to be that big, so mm -hmm. you know. But hey, it was boxing from twelfth grade on. Okay, yeah. and um, give us a little insight on your first fight. Who did you fight, and what year was this? Uh, I don't remember who I fought, mm -hmm. but it was like nineteen seventy nine, mm -hmm. and uh, it was here in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And it was a Spanish kid. I know that much. Oh, okay. And uh, I won. You and from then on, I just kept on winning. Mm. And uh, I was the runner up to go to the Olympics, and a guy by the name of Vernon Forrest mm. Mm. Okay, I know Vernon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he had got killed, but you know, mm -hmm. bless him. And uh, that's what beat me to go to the Olympics. And after that, I took a year off. Then I turned pro. Okay. Won the first world championship. Wow. Well, let's, let me ask you this question. Exactly how many fights have you had in your career? 52. 52? Uh, yeah, 50, 46 and uh, 6. Mm. So how many how many KOs was that? It was like 20. I can't remember. Okay. Something. Do you remember your first knockout? Uh, no. No, you don't remember it? You just was knocking them out when you could, huh? <laughs> okay. And what year did you become pro? Uh, okay, the Olympics was in 92, so I turned pro about... 94. Mm, I mm. took a couple years off. Okay, what was that journey like to get to pro? Well, it really wasn't that hard. It was just more for me of a uh, downfall because I didn't make the 92 Olympic team. Mm -hmm. But everybody was in my ear, Stevie, man, you need to just go turn pro, go back to box, go back to mm -hmm. box. So that's what I did after I got tired of everybody telling me what to do, mm -hmm. listening to it. So how would you feel at that time? Down. Down? I, I should have been on that Olympic team that mm -hmm. year. All right, so d please discuss your success as a two-time lightweight champion. Oh, man, it was, hey, I was, everything to this belt right here, WBC. I mean, she was on the, on the sides of Joe Lewis and Muhammad Ali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, hey, this is the best belt to have. You see, you'll see uh, next Saturday Floyd be fighting for this belt. Oh, that's a, oh, with him and Kano? Yeah, they'll be fighting for oh, that okay, belt. Okay, okay. Well, I'm, I don't know how this works. So if you got the belt and they're going to be fighting for the belt, you keep your title? Yeah, I keep, they just uh make a new one. Oh, okay okay and but see this was at 135 lightweight uh-huh they fighting at uh i think junior middleweight oh junior middleweight oh okay so they have wbc belts in each weight division oh okay well since we're talking about your belts you want to kind of give us some um history and, and well, kind of tell us a little story about these know, belts you have wbc is the most recognized belt there there is mm -hmm. and behind we got the iba international boxing association Oh, be so heavy. Oh, yeah, let's move this one over here for a second. Uh, then we got the IBO, International Boxing Organization. Uh, hold up, before you move, hold up, before okay. you go. Do you remember who you fought to win this belt? Uh, I got this one from Jean Baptiste Mindy over in France, in 1997. France. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got my first mini stitches. <laughs> oh, he bust yeah. you up a little bit? Nah, we hair but Oh, hair but okay, in okay. The, in the fourth round. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I wanted this so bad, I, you know. I just asked my corner to stop it, the mm, bleeding, right? Because you know they had stopped a fight, right, me. right. But uh, see, I went on to win this. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. so who, who? What's the next belt you got? Uh, the IBO. The IBO. Who did you now, fight for I that? Fought, I fought a Mexican kid by the name of uh, I think Jose Alvarez or something like that. Mm -hmm. I really can't remember. Okay, okay. that's okay. But yeah. you got the belt. That's what counts. Yeah. <laughs> What about this one? Yeah, I fought another Spanish kid. Oh, okay. What this was that? This uh, this was was down in uh Tampa, Florida. Tampa, Florida. Yep. Okay. I fought in for the International uh, Boxing Association. Was any of these knockouts? Any of these belts? Nah, they all win decisions. They Champions decisions. don't like to get knocked out. They, oh, they fight for they that. fight for it. Huh? They hold yeah. on, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing weak about them. So talk about that belt that you have in your hands there. This one was just more or less like a trophy given to me because after I won, I think it was the IBO. Mm -hmm. They had just uh, gave me this because of all the belts I accomplished. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Well, that's cool, man. That's, that's a nice little thing. I wish I had yeah. some belts, but you know, I gave up. I started boxing, and then I got out real quick because you know I don't yeah. think that was my thing. I was more of a lover than a fighter. I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> so, during the course of your career, what has been your most memorable fight, and why? Um, the one when I had lost this belt here in Denver, Colorado, at mm -hmm. the Pepsi Center, mm -hmm. and like a half an hour later. They, they changed the decision and called it the draw. Oh, wow. And from then on, after that, it's just like I didn't want to fight no more. Mm. It, was just, it was just a letdown. Wasn't in your heart anymore, huh? Yeah. 
So um, what's some of the things that you have learned from boxing? Trust no one. Trust no one. Yes. So why you say that? Because it's it's fast money. Uh, you make a lot of money and, and it goes really fast. Mm. So, okay, this is always a question I always had. Like, I mean, you can tell the truth. No, you, you're not boxing anymore, are you? No. So, if some of those things stay, like, do they fix some fights? No, or, no, no. it's not. That's not no. true. That's everything no. is real. It's all real. Okay, so that, that rumor is not a true rumor. Okay, mm-hmm. I always wanted to ask that question, though. <laughs> all right, um, how has boxing affected your life negatively and positively? Positively, it just kept me out of trouble, it kept me out, you know, away from bad things out mm-hmm. here. Like, negatively, I don't have nothing to say about it. Negative. It just that you just got to watch out who you're dealing with mm-hmm. in boxing. Okay, okay. Are you currently boxing? And tell us about the day in the life of Stevie Johnson, if you still no, are. I'm no, I'm boxing. No. But so, uh, some days I go there, my, my Uncle Richard, mm-hmm. that trained me, mm-hmm. he teaches kids how to fight. And sometimes I go by the gym, help him out. Oh, you do? Yeah. So so you kind of give, like, you like a mentor in a sense. You get yes. to train some folks. Yeah. Is there some, like, some prospect out there right now that you're working with that you want to mention today? No. No? No one out there right now? Not right, no one. Okay. Well, you know what? I, I want to ask you, what is some advice you would offer to any aspiring boxer, boxer, and what would be the most important thing they need to know? Just stay focused and uh, don't don't get sidetracked. Hmm. Stay focused. And let boxing be your number one priority. Mm, okay. Well, Stevie, man, it was a pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you. We would like to definitely have you come back anytime you'd like to come back. Yes, sir. And is there any last thing that you'd like to say before we cut? Um, I want to say, can I say hi to a couple You can do it. It's your time. It's your time. Hi, Malia. That's my wife, okay. Judy. Okay. Uh, hi, Miss Norma. Hi, Margo. Uh, hi, Jerry. Uh, hi, Xavier. Hi, Xavier. Hi, Diamond. Jalen, Julian, Devon, <laughs> Miss Norma, Leonard, Marla. Uh, that's right. Okay. He, he's saying by uh, to his kids, but um, the clips I'm showing you. No, there we go. The clips I'm showing you are are basically when um, him him traveling around the world. Like this is against Billy Schwer. And that's where I kind of, this is where I kind of remember him from when he came to when he came to London, um, where he fought Billy Schwer. And he listened. And, uh, you know, this he put on an exhibition, man. And that's the first time I, I knew about him. And I was talking about all the great fighters he fought and, and, and amateurs. And, you know, and then, you know, this the, Stevie Johnson was a, what, what you call a world champion, a world, proper world champion. This guy winning a title in France against Mendy, then defending it in Japan. And then, you know, um, he came back and then you saw him fight Adrian Manfredi. Then, he comes, to, then he goes again. He goes to England and fights Billy Swear. You know what I mean? And then, um, obviously in California, the Castillo fights. And you know what Cesar, Cesar Bazana as well, who was who was pretty good as well. That's the one that he won the title from originally. And um, I, I gotta admit, man, this, this Stevie Johnson, the unsung hero. If you don't know that, this goes some the, the, this fight here. It was it was just beautiful to watch. I mean, I was a bit choppy on my um. On my screen at the minute so uh, you know I, I can't help that but it was a beautiful display this south the, the stevens ball beautiful south ball display of boxing hitting and get hit you know i'd love to see him match his skills against uh shane mosley and uh you know shane mosley at lightweight and you i would love to see floyd mirror because they were fighting on the same card with the castillo fight so when floyd mirror beat castillo i think uh, stevie johnson was probably looking to fight the winner but they had the rematch and i think when they had the rematch I think he fought at the time. I'm not sure if not sure if he fought him. He fought one the one Lascano, and you know one Lascano stopped Stevie in the eleventh round. But by then Stevie had numerous defense in his belt. You see Billy Square frustrated, like most guys in there. You know he land. You don't let, you land one punch. You ain't gonna land again against Stevie Johnson. Southpaw, slick Southpaw, um, reminiscent of partner Whitaker. Um, a great fighter, little bad bad Stevie jo- Johnston. So um, I thought I'd show these guys unsung heroes. I'm gonna have a couple more guys for you to show. So um, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put the playlist in the description box of this video. Um, and uh, yeah, man, for this, for those who don't know, Stevie Johnston. Like, this is a Billy show. This is obviously this is why obviously some fighters back in the days we had names like um, Muhammad Ali. People in England remember Muhammad Ali. They remember Sugar Ray Robinson. They remember Marvin Hagler. They remember Tim Bradley. 
Yeah, came over here. They remember Terrence Bud Crawford came to Scotland. So, you know, because these guys, they travel, you know, they, they, they don't sit on their laurels in their country. They have to, wherever the title is, they go fight. I mean, let me show you the Jap Japanese guy when he went to Japan. So this is in England, in London. Look how he's schooling him, right? And then obviously Angel Man Freddy, who lost against Floyd Mayweather. Um, let me do this. It's, he lost against Flo he lost against Floyd Floyd Mayweather. Let's see what's did they go back? Oh, there you go. Let me go back. Yeah, he lost the Angel. There you go, Angel Man Freddy. He lost against Floyd Mayweather in within three rounds. And then you see, uh, this is a beautiful fight, by the way. I can tell you, it's a beautiful fight between uh, Angel Man Freddy and, and TV Johnson. Boy, listen, when I watch it, it was just, it was beautiful skills, man. Angel Man Freddy is a very dangerous fighter, by the way. He can hit very hard. And Steve, he was just be able to just nummify him and just easy, just, just constantly just beat him on points. He just schooled him. Schooled him like he was. I mean, you can see, look at the movement. The South, he, he couldn't even, I mean, he was complaining. Angel Man Freddy was looking for a rematch. And this fight was at lightweight as well. So he was comfortable at the weight. There's no excuses that he went down to Super Feather. He was comfortable at the weight. And, uh, and Stevie, Stevie, Stevie Johnson just, just done him dirty. You know what I mean? And let me show you this fight here. Um, in J the one in Japan. Let me see when he went to Japan. No, no, that's, that's George Scott. Not that one. Let me see this one. There you go. This is the one in Japan, right? Because I, 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 I couldn't find the one from France. So, um, no, that's, that's the George Scott fight. Let me show you. Get the fight from Japan. Yeah, it's the one in Japan. This is one I, I found on it. This is like it, this one is on. It's not even a. Uh, it's uh What's it? Someone's on unlist. It's unlisted as well. So it's unlisted, so you can't even see it. Like you know what I mean? This one's here is good. Oh, he's, this is listen. Craft is beautiful. This is what you call a pro's pro, a pro's pro. You know, artful skill hit and not be hit. I mean, his amateur career 200, 260 wins. With nearly three, I mean that's nearly three hundred fights, right? And um, with thirteen, with thirteen losses, the records nice, very good. You know what I mean? And like I said, he beat, he had three fights with Shane Mosley. He won one. Uh, he won him and Shane won, and then they split. So Shane won two out of the three. But like he beat Shane Mosley, the Fernand Forrest one. Like he came back in that fight, even by knocked down. I think I showed it earlier on, and he was he was in the fight. So yeah, this is definitely a guy who who don't get enough credit. Uh, in boxing, people don't even mention his name from Denver, Colorado. If you don't know, let's bring this. These these guys need to be put out there and shown. You know, Floyd Mayweather never fought him. Shane Mosley never fought him as a pro. Vernon Forrest obviously was too uh, obviously a world where you saw what happened with there. And the Castillo fights, Castillo was recommended as one of the best lightweight uh, lightweights out there. But the fight with with, with Steven Johnson, they were though so close. And obviously, we know what happened with Floyd Mayweather and Castillo. So you can imagine. If we may have would have fought uh, Stevie Johnson, how that fight would have won the South War, it would have been very interesting to see how May would have won. Most people would have said how May would have won hands down easy, but I don't think so. Because if you look at the guy, the fights that May have fought with uh, Angel Man Fred, he blew him out. Castillo, he had a close fight. Most people think he lost. Well, Stevie, they said Stevie lost in the first, so he admits it. But in the second fight, he, he won, and then they changed the decision. They actually changed the decision. So in the fight, they actually gave the fight in Denver, Colorado. And a couple of minutes later, they changed the decision. So I don't know what went wrong there. And, and, and you know, Stevie, he, Stevie never got his belt back. He never got his title shot again. And he was just fighting, hopefully, and waiting to get his shot back. It's a shame that he never got his uh, never got his title. So two-time world champion, TV Jones. Look at him, just playing with this kid from Japan. He was walking in, swinging punches, and hoping he can land something, you know? Um there was another fight with this guy called Al Alaranjo who knocked out Kevin Kelly. Let me show you this guy as well. So I'm pros this one. This is this is like noble fights. I mean, he lost against Juan Lascano and you know he lost against um Vivian Harris later on. But by then, you know, he was boxing for a long time. But this is a beautiful fight, that Angel Man Freddy fight. I really enjoyed that fight right there. The Billy Swear fight, boy, it was a master class right there. That's a master class of boxing. Obviously, at the Castillo fight, um, you know, he 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 admitted that he, he wasn't there. He had other things on his mind uh going into that fight there. But you know, that's that's boxing for you. But I was to me, he looked like it was a close fight. I don't know. I mean, I have to watch it and score myself, but this is the Castillo fight, you know. That's a hard close backwards and forward. They're both in there wrapping up, man. But he's going toe to toe with him. 
you know, Castillo wasn't easy for anyone, you know. But the thing is, he had all them big knockouts, but he never fought no one. That was the first step up, right? This is the rematch. It's the even this here, the rematch. He actually got awarded the win at this fight. Let's see, let's get to the end of this fight, right? Because he got awarded the win and then they changed the decision around. Last look, let me see. Look, they're going to get to the decision. So we get to the decision. What's my man saying? Mage Freddy was over, overlooked here yeah, during his career. Yeah, but Stevie Johnson has sadly become a, a, a obstacle fighter. Yeah, Stevie, look, see. Let me listen. <laughs> look, he's got his hands up in the air. Like, I don't think he won the fight, man. I don't know why he got his hand up. He just happy he probably went the distance because Castillo was trying to do that even when he fought Mayweather. Even when he fought Mayweather, he was on that. Oh, his eyes are swell up, man. It's good school cards. John Keane scores the belt. 114, 114. He has it even. Jeez. Ken Marie. John King, he's from England. He always does that. He did that with Lennox Lewis as well. And he also took, deducted. He, he he scored the fight with um with uh Julio Chavez versus uh Parnell Whitaker. You know, he's he's got his cards was terrible, them UK judges. And then he, you know, he took a point with Eubank and Ben. These English judges are terrible. This is another judge. Reader scores the bell. 115 to 114. Daniel Vanderbilt scores the belt 115 to 114 for the winner by majority decision. And once again, the new. There you go. See? See, he got awarded the win, yeah? And then moments later, I don't know what happened, moments later. They changed the decision and then they gave the belt. They awarded the fight as a draw. So it looked like there was some chicanery. Look, look. Look, see, Max Kellen's going to talk about it right now. Madness, man. He won the fight. He won the fight, clearly. Three time world champion, man. Three time world. Three time world champion. Yeah. Three time world champion. All right, thank you very much. Now, we're always here to say if a guy got a hometown job, Castillo had that look about him like, oh, of course, I had no chance. But no, it was that close. And that's exactly See? what he scored at 115 114. I, I had it 115 114. See? I thought Scott Ledoux's card of 15 uh, 15 was good. 14 14 is fine. Stevie got a, a razor thin decision in a fight that couldn't have been closer. Castillo's an excellent fighter. I thought Stevie was hit a hair better tonight. Stevie Johnson has lost some close ones in his career. He's won some close decisions. Mm -hmm. John Baptiste Mendy, and now tonight, uh, that's the way it goes. And you mentioned too with Bazan last time. I thought he was barely beat Bazan, but I saw a sharper, tighter Stevie Johnson at that point. He, he is sort of on the other side now. Great win, but he's not quite what he used to be. I agree because you saw in the Bazan rematch how he was boxing sharp, and when, and after I made the comment, Stevie Johnson is flat-footed. He should be letting uh, Castillo come to him. Well, he did let Castillo come to him, and that didn't be didn't seem to work too well either it only worked in spots he does seem maybe a half step slower uh maybe not quite as tight uh, with his defense getting hit a little bit more and uh maybe he is on the other side he's an old nah bro well you know the thing is yeah like the thing is the, the, that against castillo that's no there's no shade in that you know what i mean there's no, th there's no shade in that you know there's no shade in that there's no shade there's no shade in that let's talk about they're gonna they're gonna talk about they're gonna talk about stevie johnson so the, we we'll talk about. They're gonna talk about him. Here we go. Listen to this. Listen to this. A little bit later on, will C. Floyd Mayweather acknowledged as far and away the best 130-pound fighter in the world, coming up in weight to try to win the lightweight championship against the acknowledged best lightweight in the world, Jose Luis Castillo. No. And before that happens, we'll see the man from. He is not. It's the, well, listen. The thing about it, right, if Stevie would have won it, Stevie would have been acknowledged the free weight world weight champion, and maybe would have been fighting uh, Stevie Johnson instead. And this is what I'm. So this is why he's an unsung hero because they changed the decision in the ring, and maybe would have been fighting Stevie Johnson. But listen to this. Boom Castillo won his lightweight championship. Stevie Johnson trying to make it on the comeback trail against another comebacking fighter, Alejandro Cobrita Gonzalez of Mexico, seven years ago. You saw him win the featherweight championship. 
in a memorably violent fight with Kevin Kelly in San Antonio, Texas. Working with me, as always, HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant. Larry, tonight, uh, both Stevie Johnston of Denver and Floyd Mayweather Jr., who lives here in Las Vegas, will be entering the ring for important fights within just a few weeks of very public, domestic, and legal difficulties. How might they be affected? The only thing we can say for sure, Jim, is that uh, we might need Judge Harold tonight less than Judge Judy. <laughs> it was just a year ago that Floyd Mayweather was saying that he would beat up the domestically challenged Diego Corrales for all of the battered women out there. Oops. After he was accused of battering the two mothers of his three children, Mayweather is now serving a suspended six-month sentence. Meanwhile, Johnson recently spent a week in jail for lack of payment of child support for the three women who have his four children. Where is Judge Judy when we need her? You see, and this is the thing, right? You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, Stevie Stevie got himself in some pickle as well. So so in, this is the undercard of the Castillo fight. Stevie was fighting. This is another one I stole Stevie as well. You know what I mean? Against the Halandro. So he came out hard on Stevie because he beat Kevin Kelly. He was moving up the weight. Because Stevie, Stevie only stands, as you can see on the screen, he only stands five foot four and a half. You know, this is what makes it even better. As a southpaw, five foot four and a half fight. All everyone he fight, they all got reach, they all got height advantage, and he's able to mix it up. He's amazing. He's absolutely amazing against Vernon Forrest. So let me show you the Vernon Forrest one, right? To show what I'm talking about. Vernon, Vernon, you know how tall Vernon Forrest is? Vernon Forrest and Shane Mosley, who they regarded one of the greatest lightweights of all time. Let's show you the Vernon Forrest fight, right? I'll show you right here. Let me show you that one right here. Pull that up on the screen. See what I'm talking about? You see the height disparity, man. What he's dealing with. You see what he's dealing with. Look at the height. You know, Vernon's near like near, near six foot, man. If he ain't already. You know what I mean? And you saw when he fought Shane as a pro, you know, in the in, in their fight. where well, they had a few fights as well. Because he was in the cusp right there. Oscar De La Hoya was a or the was the weight class below it. And this is the thing, right? Vernon get moved up to world weight. Shane started the same way. He won the same belt in the same year against Phil Holiday. See, uh, Stevie had to go to France to win his belt, the WBC belt. You know what I mean? And, you know, this is what I said. He's got a better resume at lightweight than Shane Mosley. But then they say Shane Mosley um, is the greatest lightweight. But I'm like, but you didn't fight Stevie Johnson. How that? And you know what I mean? You didn't fight Stevie Johnson. You didn't fight Castillo. You didn't fight Cesar Bassan. You didn't fight none of the guys. You didn't fight Angel Manfredi. You didn't fight... Um, Arturo Gatti, you know, you didn't find none of them guys there. They were around. They were all around in the weight class. You know what I mean? Uh, at least Mayweather fought them, but Mayweather fought them at, uh, uh, what's his name, Angel Manfredi at Super Fever. You know, so, you know, it's, a, it's this way people put their boxing. But the, the, the fact of the matter is, in the amateurs, you look, this is Shane Mosley. Look what he's doing to Shane Mosley, man. No, is it Shane Mosley? No, Vernon Forrest. Look how he's putting in the work with Shane Mosley. Well, Vernon Forrest got the decision on that one, right? Let's show you get let's show you get Shay Mosley. You know what I mean? Let's show you get Shay Mosley. So like I said, I'm gonna put their playlist in the, in the in the thing so you can check it out. And I got some other guys that I'm unsung unsung boxing heroes that people know. You know. He's truly a guy that people need to understand. He's a great, great, world traveled, beautiful, uh, great amateur fighter. Uh, record looking at. I mean, the picture's kind of green. Hopefully, the screen. So this is Shay Mosley. Shay Mosley in the black. You know, you can see Shane popping his jab, how he been, you know, how he always does. But you see little Bud, uh, little, <laughs> little Bud, but Bad, yeah, he, he rolls in and this lands his shot, his southpaw, he gave Shane all the trouble he can. You can see why Shane didn't want to face him as a pro, man. He said, man, I ain't face him as a pro, man. You know, man, I ain't face him because he wouldn't be able to land the shots there. Look, you see how he's making him? Look how he's making Shane miss, man. I mean, it's chopped up, yeah, so it's kind of hard to see. But you'll see it, like, when you press the playlist. So, anyway, yeah, I thought I'd put that out. That's Stevie, little but bad, yeah. John Johnston, you know what I mean? Um, Jim, check him out. Unsung hero. He should be in the Hall of Fame. People screaming about other people should be in the Hall of Fame. This kid, uh, without a doubt, should be in the Hall of Fame, in my opinion. One of the greatest lightweights of all time, in my opinion. And uh, he should get more praise. Only because 
certain guys didn't want to face him. Shay Mosley, um, the, you know, the Mayweather fight, I can understand the ball. The Mayweather fought whoever was at lightweight. And, and if that could have been Stevie Johnson, if he, he, he won the decision and then he reversed the decision. And like, so he didn't get his shot against Shay against Floyd Mayweather. And that would have been that now that people would remember Stevie Johnson differently, you know. But that's the way boxing goes sometimes, you know. So, you know, I thought I'd share that with you. I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, little nostalgic trip, you know, with Stevie Little, Little Bad Johnson, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, man, you know, it's just one of them guys that people can try and remember. Like I said to you, as a pro, that's the fight I wanted to start the fight as a pro. That never happened as a pro. You know, he was the IBF champion uh, and Stevie Johnson was the OBC champion. And well, for every reason, Shane didn't look his way. They want no part of little but little bad boy, little but bad Johnston. <laughs> he want no part of no parts of that at all, bruh. No parts at all. If you look at Shane Shane Mills's resume, he ain't better than Stevie Johnson, man. It just ain't. It ain't. It ain't. I can. I can show you. I show. I pull it up on the screen. You know I mean Angel Man Freddy Billy Swell was a world top European uh, British Commonwealth champion, bruh. You know what I mean? Then you got the Castillo fights. The two Castillo fights, you got the Cesar, but Cesar Bazan fights, you know, you got them fights there. Um, just not let me uh, let me show I'll bring up on the screen actually. Let me bring up on the screen to show you what I'm talking about. All right. So uh um, I got the box wreck here. Yeah, I got the box wreck. All right. So uh, yeah, I got the box wreck, so I can share the screen. I'll share the screen right now. One second, guys. No, no, no there it is. I'll share this, there it is. There you go. All right. Share the, share the screen. I can, I can zoom in as well. Let's do, do some zoom in. Oh, yeah. Zoom in. There we go. 21. All right. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's good. Okay. I'll zoom in. There you go. That's way too much. Is that too much? Mm, maybe not. Yeah, maybe, I did. maybe it's a bit too much, actually. Let me zoom out a bit. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's what I was wondering what that was. All right, let's go. Let's go down his resume, and then we can go down Shane's resume to show you what I'm talking about. Highlighted fights, right? So, if we look at his resume, this is Stevie Stevie Johnson's resume, right? Um, okay, this is where he won the title. John, is it John Baptiste Mende? Yeah, he won. Look at the guy's record: forty nine wins with five losses, with two with two draws. He won him on a split decision. You know what I mean? He had to look at it. He went to go to France in Paris. Yeah. And George Copontier. You know, George Copontier, the great uh, uh, multiple weight champion, fought Jack Dempsey. Um, he, he was light, also a, a light, light heavyweight. He, they, they named the arena over here in France. So he won his first wild title in, in, that, in, in Paris, in France, right? Then look at this. He went to Japan and fought uh, this. Uh, you know, I can't pronounce his name too well. Right, and then he, this guy was twenty-seven and one, and and defended his title against him. Right, then he defended his title again in America and against this guy in America, Cesar Bazan, yeah, where he lost the title by split. So again, it's a close fight. Right, then he had another fight in America, and then he won the title back from Cesar Bazan. Right, then so now he starts another reign. Then he defended it, Angel Man Freddy fight. That's why I've, I've kind of highlighted that. Angel Man Freddy, Angel Man Freddy fight. Oh, I don't know what I've done there. <sighs> Go back. Okay, the, the Angel Man, the Angel Man Freddy fight, um, which is a great fight. I think that's one of the single fights of his career. Um, Angel Man Freddy, uh, 20, 28 wins with three losses and one draw. That's one of the highlights of his career, in my opinion. You know, um, actually, you know what? What am I doing? I've got the thing on the screen. Sorry, I'm going to have to. <laughs> My bad. I'm going to have to do it again. Now, let me show it again. Let me go again. All right. Let me go again. I'm there showing stuff on that. And the scene, see, yeah, you can't see the screen. The box with My bad. <laughs> let me go again. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Okay. My bad. I just realized because I had it on the screen just now, you know. Just realized. All right. Let's start again. Okay. So he won his title in France. Yeah, George George Compontier, uh, 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 Paris in Paris. Yeah, look, he won his first belt against this guy, um, Jean Jean Baptiste Mende. Right, you can see it on the screen right now. Actually, let me zoom in a bit more on the screen because it's like um, being a full screen. There you go. That's better. 
All right, there you go. That's better. Okay, so he won his first title in France against John Baptiste Mendy and um, Baptiste Mendy. And look at his record, 39-5 win. I mean, he only won the World Belt once and defended it once and lost against Stevie Johnson, right? But Steve had to go to France from America, right? Then he defends the title in in Japan in, a, what's it? A Re ok ok Okinawa, Okinawa Arena, right? Uh, he won a split decision defend, defending the title over there in Japan, right? Defends the belt. So that's this is his second defense. Third defense in, in America, Joe Scott. Um, they defend that was a good fight, one at 12. And he, he supposed these fights go to the decision, but you got Sidney to fight. Says the band, he lost the belt. Um, but let's get says the band's a good fight. He had a good fight with Castillo, actually. He's a good lightweight, very good lightweight, very competent. He had a, he, he then obviously brought himself back up, got a knockout. Um, then he put himself back up in the title contention to get a rematch. Most guys get a rematch, right? Then he gets a rematch and then he wins the belt back in, in split decision against Cesar, against Cesar Bazan. Yeah, he wins his belt back. Now he's a two-time world champion. Now he, now he starts to defend. This is the second reign of his defense. Defends the belt in America. And the Angel Man Freddy fight is the signature fight for me. Definitely one of the signature fights of his win. Great fight. When I, I really enjoyed watching that fight between Stevie Johnson and um, Angel Man Freddy. I really enjoyed it. Angel Man Freddy come off the loss against uh, Floyd Merivar with three, three in three rounds. And he, it, he took him to school. Just took Stevie. He just, Angel Man... Uh, Stevie Johnson took him to school in that fight. It was a great fight. And then um, the Billy Swear fight, um, that's the fight where I, where I remember him, obviously, in the UK. That's what I remember because I remember Billy Swear. And everyone in America, in England knows who he is. And that's what I found out. Who's this guy, Stevie Johnson? Because that's how most guys back in the days in the UK remember kind of fighters when they come over on abroad. So obviously people in, in France, people in Japan, they know who Stevie Johnson is. He's well-traveled. Now he comes to England. That's like three different countries now, right? So he defends the belt in, in England and beats the uh, United decision uh, against uh, Billy Swear, right? Then he defends the belt again. So he's, 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 this is his next run. Then he lost the belt again against Castillo, which when I, if I look at that fight, that look, that looks so close, you know, it's hard to read. It depends on what you're scoring. Uh, what's the score? 1, 1, 1, 6, 1, 11, 116, 130, 1, 130, 115, 141, got a draw. Then, obviously, um, what's this fight here? He won, then he got the rematch here, yeah? and this is the, the controversy. He actually won. He actually won at a draw, a draw, and one fifteen. One Danny Vanderbilt one fifty one forty. Now look at this. Stevie Johnson was was originally declared the winner by majority decision, right? Because he had to got two draws by these two here, right? But the Vanderbilt won it. Then it goes seven minutes later. It was discovered that the judge Ken Moretti scored originally one fifteen one fourteen. Yeah, that made it a draw. That had to be see the, the, the incorrect scoring. Yeah, so he lost or the Castillo retained his belt, and uh, Steve. You know what I mean? And you know, Steve was notified, showed up in the dressing room to give back his belt. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. I don't think. I think that's a lie. I think that you know that that decision should have stand. You know what I mean? That should have stood. And you know he he would have been a free weight champion, and he would have went on to fight Mayweather. And then he, instead, yeah, he had to go back on the road. And then, you know, because Castillo fought Mayovar. And um, Castillo fought Mayovar and they had a rematch. And Stevie was out the picture waiting for it to get his belt back. In the meantime, he's fighting all these guys on the road. All these girls, he's getting older and older. He's getting, this is the Alejandro fight where, um, you know, Mayovar was on the card. So Mayovar was challenging on that card, right? This fight here, um, the MGM Grand. And he had to sit there and watch Mayovar and Castillo fight twice before he got his shot so now by the time the second fight came along i think this was the this is the one this is the one what done him in right and this is the one i didn't want to put on on the playlist against one one let's come let's look on the event i think it was the event i don't think it was the main event i think maybe if i was on the main event i'm not too sure of that card i'm not too sure let me see that one or oh, oscar de Hoya versus shane mosley was on that card that's the one he lost didn't it okay miguel Cotter was on that card. It was a good card actually that was a good card still Okay. Well, he didn't get his he didn't get his shot, man. You know what I mean? He didn't get his shot. And cuz Mayweather won the belt off Castillo, Mayweather vacated the belt, so he still didn't get his shot. You know what I mean? He still didn't get his shot. So, what's this card here? Indiana. Nah, I don't think there was nothing in Indiana down there. So that was that. So look, let me show you so what I'm talking about. 
where you know Mayville was on the pitch and he didn't get his fight against Mayville, which would, would have put him in a different uh, bracket of how people remember him. See, look, he was an undercard of that fight, hopefully to get any shot at the winner of these two. And then no may have, um, you know, may have won the fight, but he gave him an automatic rematch, which, you know, Stevie Johnson would have been primed for, you know, and that's, and that's what it is, man. And that's, that's, you know, so Stevie, Stevie little, little bad, bad Johnson, you got to check him out, man. Now he's an unsung boxing hero. And one of my favorites, world travel, he did what boxers do back in the days, world travel. They go around the world, and they they and in America that's why I remember some American some American fighters why they're remembered in the UK. Um, Kevin Kelly's remembered in the UK. This guy Stevie Stevie Johnson was that good. He was that good. Um, signature fight for me against Angel Man Freddy, hundred percent. And also the Billy Swerve fight when he came to the UK where I where that's what I remember him when he when he went against Billy Swerve. Um, that was a great fight as well. The Castillo fights. Um, you know they they were back. You could well you could watch them. You can probably score it, Stevie. Maybe you score it for Castillo, whichever. But it shows the caliber. But this fight here, they say Mayv was the greatest lightweight. So why didn't he fight Stevie Johnson? When Mayv when 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 Castillo when he won his belt in in, in France, Shingo Shemozi won his belt against Phil Holiday, and he was the IBF champion. But yet they say he was the greatest. Um, Mayv was the greatest uh, lightweight champion. But he was there, and uh, Castillo was there. Angel Man Freddy was there, you know, and, and Shea Mo's never fought none of these guys here. None of none of these guys. In fact, let me just bring up his resume still to just to just to just to qualify what I'm talking about, right? Shea Mosley. Because I I ain't trying to be people think are you you a hating? No, I ain't hating. Nope. I ain't at all. Just telling you how it is, right? Um so let's go to uh Shea Mosley's resume at lightweight. So you can see what I'm talking about. I have to go to Floyd's and this uh real quick. Before I leave, and if you come along, just check and make sure you check and archive the rest of the stuff. Though, what's up, Coach K? How you doing, bro? Yeah, I'm up early, in it. <laughs> I'm up early. You know, unsung boxing heroes, man, it has to be done, man. There's guys that I feel not getting enough uh, shade, and no one really talks about them. But I'm gonna make sure Stevie Johnson gets name gets put out there when you talk about one of the greatest lightweights because his name, without a doubt, is definitely. And they they say Shane Mosley, and he's going to Hall of Fame now. If he's going to Hall of Fame, Stevie Johnson should be right in there. You know what I mean? Because they, they, a lot of these guys avoided him and he was there, right? So look, let me show you something, right? Shane Mosley. Let me show you something about Shane Mosley. It's coming up right now. Let me get it right here. So you see what I'm talking about. When Shane Mosley was a lightweight. And look at his resume. And you look at Shane Mosley's resume and you look at Stevie, Stevie, Stevie Johnson's resume. And you told me, well, you told me how, how that guy is, 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 uh, Regardless of one of the greatest lightweights, when he ain't got nothing like Stevie Johnson's resume. Yeah, Stevie lost some, but he was always in the fight, right? Always close fight. There you go. Look, look at this, right? So Shay Mosley, he won his world title in 1997. Stevie Johnson won it in 1997. Stevie Johnson won his in France. My man won it in in in, uh, in America. So he ain't gone nowhere. And that's cool. And he won a nice decision, right? Then look at this girl, Miguel Gomez, who's Demetrius Carabero, John John Molina. I know who John John Molina. He's a very good fighter, by the way. Yeah, Rafredo Rivera. These are all lightweight defenses, man. Look at these guys here. He, uh, Jesse James Leo was good lightweight. Golden Johnson, people liked him at the time. They look, but look at his record of fifteen and two and two. But these are not like, these are not like real. And then uh, John Brown. These are these are and there he is. That's that's all of his lightweight defenses, bro. So then I, let me show you. Then you look at Stevie Johnson, right? And this is why Shane, Shane didn't want to see him. Shane didn't want to see him at lightweight. He didn't want to see Stevie, Stevie Johnson at lightweight. And I, I can't I can't say Floyd tried to duck him up because I Floyd fought Floyd fought who was at the at, uh, at the division. So I can't I can't really pick on him and say, yeah, Floyd ducked him. I can't do that. But because I think Floyd would have fought him if he had the belt. But Floyd had ob obligations against the Castillo fight. So let's look at him, right? Stevie Johnson's resume. Again, coming up right here. All right, so look at this. So look at when he won his belt as well. Look, yeah, he won his belt. He won his year. I'm not saying, I don't know, Shane Moore. Look, they what, 97, right? So they won their belt. Both of them, yeah, they won their belts in the same year. But look but look at the guys he's fighting. Okay, let's say we don't know who that Japanese guy is, but bruh, 
it's still another country and it's everything against you, isn't it? Like that, you know, you're going to some of people's color. He won his butt in France. That that it don't mean they're gonna be cool, but you, you had to you had to be so impressive, and it was a split decision to even win the butt over there. If you split decision in their country, that means he probably outboxed them and, and boxed them wide, you know what I mean? But he probably don't want to show up their fighter. You know, and even though people, I don't know, you don't really know who these guys are. The fact that he went to other people's country and fought them that shows you the caliber to me, the level of of uh, thing. And this is why you, I remember Stephen. Look, says a Bazan. I know he's good. Is he better than John Molina and some of the guys? Shane Moe's foot. You can say back on. You can say someone is good. Look here, right here. The Angel Man Freddie definitely good. Billy Swears the best in England. So he bought the best in Japan, the best in France, the best in England. He fought Angel Man Freddy just after Floyd beat him. And then he got the Castillo fights, man. So this, to me, the resume is better. And then these fights with the Castillo, to me, he probably won probably won these fights there. You know what I mean? So that's just my opinion, isn't it? Um, like I said, boxing on son. Stevie Little Bat Bad Johnson, man. Yeah, check him out. One of the greatest lightweights of all time. Definitely deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. And to me, in my opinion, yeah, people should recognize that and, and trying to uh, remember these guys out here, man. You know what I mean? So, you know, I thought I'd do that. It's a series I'm going to be doing. Um, ask some of your questions. I mean, uh, Freddie was overlooked during his career, but Stevie, Stevie has sadly become, uh, yeah, an obstacle. Uh, yeah, obstacle fire. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So, that's how it is, man. That's ridiculous. Yeah, he's talking about, uh, yeah, they, how they've done him dirty. There's a lot of fighters that needed to be inducted. Yep. Yeah, he needs to be inducted in the Hall of Fame. He got inducted in the Denver Hall of Fame, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I know you can't see the box that I got out there. Coach, yeah, I'm up early, coach. Yeah, I'm on that, I'm on that case, boy. Salute to the bro. Yep. Yeah. Everyone's up early, boy. Okay. Uh the YouTube boxing should give him give him all these over should do overlook of the fighters shine instead of, of protecting fighters. Yeah, hundred percent, bro, hundred percent. No doubt, no doubt. Anyway, guys, man, I thought I'd just uh, come on and show you that. You know what I'm saying? Big up to everyone uh, who, who come over to watch. And uh, Stevie Johnson, go check him out. I'll put the playlist in the description box. I'm EJ Boxing Live. Thanks to you guys over there, Coach K, Manzeno in uh, in the chat. Uh, it's coming over and check him out. So I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>